get a mic. Hey guys, uh, great having the guys back in the building. Uh, obviously a lot of excitement uh, from players and staff. A uh, huge week right here, a uh, great opponent in, in Georgia. Uh, excited to uh, to get going this week with these guys uh, defensively. Georgia's you know playing as well as anybody in the country. Personnel's um, really strong. All three levels of the defense and offensively playing really efficient football. Quarterbacks uh, making plays and, and uh, their play action pass. Got to do a great job having your eyes and your key. And they're extremely physical up, up front and, and can run the football. So huge test for us. Uh, one that uh, we're really excited about. Great to be back home. Uh, it's been a long time since we've gotten a chance to play inside Neyland Stadium. Expect a great environment uh, back home and, and uh, looking forward to the opportunity to, to, uh, to play well and, and uh, go compete together. So with that, I'll open it up. Questions? We'll start with Adam and then Patrick. Most coaches say uh, you should do what you do best regardless of the opponent. Uh, obviously, well, on paper, Georgia's a better team than you guys and better what they do than anybody else. What's the temptation like to get outside of the box to do something different this game versus just doing what you guys have done all year schematically? Uh, we change every week, you know, based on, on what you see from the uh, other side of the ball, personnel matchups, put your kids in the best position, you prepare in a great way, you know, have a great week of practice and, and finish it the right way and then go let it let it go play on, on Saturday. You play every game ten times, it, it unfolds differently uh, every single time. So um, prepare in a great way and then react to, uh, to how it's different. And, uh, you know, I thought last week there's some things in our game plan that were different and our kids adjusted extremely well in all three phases of the game. There's lots of things that we can do better from last week too, but uh, Georgia's a great opponent. Uh, our guys are going to be ready to go compete for 60 minutes. I have no question uh, about that with this group. I love competing with this team. Josh, this, is, this was announced late last week, but obviously there's a lot to talk about on Saturday night, but just the investigation being over with and no bowl ban, just kind of, I know that's just maybe the next step in the process, but what's maybe your reaction to, to that step being taken? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, for, for our staff and players, I've said it from the time that I've gotten here, I really believe that this was just going to be a speed bump uh, for, for our, our program. And, and uh, you know, the kids that are here and the kids that we recruit are going to have a chance to go continue to compete for championships. And fully believe that. Um, I think it's really unique that our university found out about what was going on, reported it, and, and uh, has been transparent from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, for our kids, I think it's really important that we're able to, to move forward. Rob, anyway. Coach. So much was made starting out about the time of possession discrepancy. Do you care about that at all? I mean, when you scored 45 points and 46 plays, I mean, do you even think about it? Say that uh, last. You, you scored 40, 45 points and 46 plays. When you do that, do you care about time of possession at all in regards to the rest of your defense? I, th I think you care about time of possession in the situation where it matters, when, it, when it's time to drain the clock. And then it's important that you're able to do that and play situational football end of halves, end of ball games. You know the the score predicated that you continue to play the the way that you're you're able to play. The other night, it's just a really unique way in, <laughs> in which the game unfolded, right? Uh, I don't know. There's you know two touchdowns and four plays. Maybe uh, shoot, we got a huge play down the sideline with Jalen on, on play six, I think. You know, and end up fumbling the ball. Just the way the game unfolded for us offensively was really unique with all the explosive plays that quickly in the football game, and then vice versa defensively. You know, they were pounding the football and getting, you know, you know, small chunks of threes and fours and fives and converting on third down where, you know, the time of possession just became what it was in, in the first half in particular. Josh, has anything about Hendon Hooker, either as a player or a person, sort of surprised you? I know that, I mean, you've been, he's been here, I guess, as long as since you've been here on day one, but anything that's sort of surprised you about him? No, I just think what's striking about him is his maturity on and off the field and just the way that he handles himself as a person, you know, and then that factors into how he prepares and, and handles, you know, positives and negatives during the course of a given day, a practice, uh, a game. Uh, I think the, the thing that's striking to me, and you don't know it until you're with them in those environments, is just the competitive nature of him. And I think you guys can see that in the way that he plays. Austin and Vince. Much like as a coach, you can use 
playing freshmen early as uh, an indicator for when you're recruiting other kids. Do you feel like you guys will be more attractive with portal kids just because you look at you're able to show them, you know, hey, Brandon Turnage was SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Javante Payton's caught six touchdowns in the last seven games. Obviously, Hendon speaks for itself, but there are several guys that came from the portal that weren't here, you know, when you got here that are a big part of why you guys are having success. Yeah, Kamal uh, had to the, the way that he's played. Uh, the guys that have come here. Uh, to restart their careers in, in some ways have found a, a bunch of playing time and a bunch of success. I think it speaks to the culture that we're building uh, with the guys that have been here uh, the entire time, foundation of who we are and, and what we're, we are inside of the locker room, uh, the accountability and, and uh, demand from each other that they're going to do things the right way. But then I think it speaks to you know what we're doing schematically and our coaching staff, being able to get the best out of their players and put them in a position of success. Josh, with the pace you guys go on offense, how does the administrative work with communication for potential replays, especially if it's something that maybe doesn't go your way offensively, <coughs> you know, with all things considering you want to keep that tempo as well? Yeah, if you feel like there's something that is important and has a chance to be replayed, you typically slow down in those situations to, to give those things an opportunity to happen. You know, um, that's guys on the field that see something. That's guys up in the press box that see something, too. Great coach. Coach, after Elante Taylor's touchdown, you had a celebration with him right by the end zone. How valuable is just a veteran player like that, especially for a rivalry game? Yeah, Elante uh, got up quicker than I did and uh, out-jumped me on that one. So uh, I've gotten him a few times on the practice field. Um, no, I just – I think it's important that you celebrate great moments with them. You want your kids to, to play with great energy and passion. As a coaching staff, then you better have that too and, and enjoy those those moments. Huge play by him. You know, changes the way the, the game unfolds the rest of the way. Great decision. And, and uh, you know, the game within the game, making it look like a soft corner, then rolling late, seeing the hands separate from the quarterback. Huge play by him. And, and uh, those are great moments. Great. Thank you. Coach, you had two kickoff returns on Saturday night for over 30 yards. What's kind of what's protocol for Valus back there? Does he have the green light, or, or is that something that's determined by you guys on the sideline on whether or not you're going to fair catch that? Kind of what's his options back there? Com combination of, of, of both. Um, you know, the depth of the kick is, is going to matter too, right, in, in the decision of, of when you're bringing it out. I thought Coach Eckler and, and our special teams, uh, our return unit, did a great job uh, of adjusting. It's a guy that I think 91 of them had been, 91 percent of his kickoffs have been touchbacks, and you know we're able to create a big play with Valus, uh, get the ball out to the 50 with the penalty, and then you know Jimmy and our, and our front line do a great job of adjusting to a sky kick, and, and he brings it out to the 50. <clears throat> Those were huge momentum and field position plays in the game. Talked about that with the guys today. What, last thing too on the running back situation, <clears throat> do you feel pretty optimistic where you are with, with Jabari and, and Tyon? Because I know they didn't finish the game Saturday. Yeah, I, I, I think the guys that you know got nicked up during the game, Jacob Warren too. Um, We'll find out more as we go through the week, but I feel like those guys will be in a position to, to help us on Saturday, but we'll find out more as the week goes on. Josh, when you went back and watched the film and, and talked with Coach Banks, just did, did you all feel like guys were in position <coughs> defensively to make plays and, and they just missed tackles, or was it a combination of missed tackles and not being in the right place? Yeah, majority of it was, was missed tackles. Um, some of it's those guys, you know, pushing and, and falling forward, you know, hitting them at two and it being a five, six yard game gain. Uh, <clears throat> you know, their offensive line, their tight ends, extremely physical. Uh, their backs ran with great pad level too. We got to do a better job this week. Eric, in half. Uh, Georgia in the front seven, they like to stand up, sometimes go from a two point stance, move around, try to confuse uh, the offensive line outside of just being really good to begin with. What have you seen from that unit on tape? and? Uh, what's the challenge for your big guys up front? It starts with the personnel. They're big, long, physical, athletic. Um, they play with speed. Um, 
you know, they do a great job of retracing uh, on perimeter screens. Um, you see that show up. When you think you got space, it, it closes down pretty quick. I don't care if that's in the core or out on the perimeter. They're able to rotate a lot of guys, too. The, the depth of their football team is a, a big part of their success, um, being able to play guys, you know, essentially almost in 50% in of the ball game and, and rotate through. Um, you know, for us, we got to do a great job of getting head on hat. we got to be physical. That's on the perimeter. That's in the core. Uh, we got to do a great job of communication, too, in, in their third down package. How much of Georgia's uh, defensive success is based on what they do on first down, getting teams into a bad down and distance? That's a huge part of, of any defense, right? Um, you know, where you're playing on your terms in third down in particular, and, and you know what's coming. You've got a chance to pin your ears back and, and get after the quarterback. They've done a great job of, you know, creating havoc and, and flipping the way the games play. You know, you look at the Florida game, it's three to nothing with two minutes to go in, in the second quarter and it's a twenty one point burst of of, uh, of points by them in the last two minutes. Go to Madison in the back. Coach, Hedgen Hooker was named the SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Kate Mays was put, named Offensive Lineman of the Week. When you look at what Mays was able to do, he played every single snap, didn't allow any pressure on Hendon Hooker. How much of Hooker's success would you contribute to Mays and offensive Yeah, if, if a quarterback's playing well, uh, there's 10 other guys around him doing their job at a really high level. It starts with the front five. Um, you know, Cade has continued to get better, in my opinion, as the season has gone along. I know he missed a couple weeks uh, in the middle part of it, but uh, he continues to, to get better and better every single week. Getting him back last week was a big part of our success. You know, congratulations to him on, on the individual uh, recognition. Well deserved. Um, you know, and at the same time, you know, Hendon. I think being decisive, understanding your reads, getting the ball out on time, you get a chance to, to help cover things up too when it's not right and some of his scrambles. And, and uh, so those two things play off of each other. Coach, the defense has had to battle, obviously, numerous quarterbacks that like to get out and uh, run the ball whenever you know a play breaks down. Uh, is it fair to say that this defense is um, confident going into this a game this week where the quarterback not necessarily known for a scrambling ability, and, and would they be a little relieved in knowing that fact? I mean, I've seen on the crossover tape that I've seen that something can get out and make plays with his feet, too. At the end of the day, we've got to do a great job pressing in the pocket. We've got to have land integrity. Uh, our defense will be confident going into this football game. Coach, you talked about high ball and his competitiveness. But, uh, about who? Or not, I'm sorry, Hendon Hooker. I'm competitive, too, though. You are competitive, yeah. definitely. <laughs> but you spoke about Hendon Hooker's competitiveness. We don't really get to know these players all that well off the field. So how would you best describe Hendon Hooker as a personality off the, off the field? I know this when he's in the building because I'm not with him a ton outside of it, right? But in the building, highly competitive, uh, you know, is a uh, is a great leader for us. Uh, I think his personality probably comes out a little bit more when he's when he's outside of the building and, and away from football. Super engaging with uh, with his teammates uh, and everything that I've been able to see. What? Josh, I know that I'm, I'm sure this isn't the plan necessarily, but again, on Saturday, uh, Javante makes a huge play early in the game, and I think he gets maybe a couple more touches throughout the game. Are, are things still just flowing the other way after the after that, or how's that happening? Just, just the way it, it unraveled, you know, the, the way the game ended up being played. Uh, you know, that first play, it's a great play by Javante, making the guy miss in, in space and taking it the distance. You know, showed it to the team today, uh, Princeton Fant and Bayless Jones, the perimeter blocking the strain, not just being a hat on a hat, but straining and creating that space gives Javante the opportunity to make the safety miss. You know, it creates the space that's needed there. Um, Javante did a really good job uh, the other night. Um, we'll continue to. He's a guy that's not getting balls, you know, in this third quarter, fourth quarter on purpose. It's just the way the game's unfolded. Some of that's just, you know, coverage and, and where the ball's, you know, predicated to go off of that. Uh, Georgia offensively, very efficient. They got about five guys that carry the ball routinely. And uh, what are the challenges going up against that offense and specifically potentially seeing two quarterbacks? I just you know it starts for me, for them up front, you know, um, physical tight ends, physical offensive line. Um, 
really good depth and, and uh, athleticism and physicality from from the running back position. Um, and then they're you know tight ends being able to be a big part of the passing game and, and play action pass. You know, good perimeter players too, and a quarterback that's playing super efficient. You got to defend it all. You know, it's not just one thing. You got to be able to hammer the run game though, and, and try to get them off off schedule and, and get off the field on third down. Coach, you guys got Elijah Simmons back on the defensive line in that game. It looked like he maybe made a little bit of a difference in, in, against the run when he was in there. Just how important was that, and how much you guys need him moving forward? Yeah, great to have him back in, in a position where he can go play. Um, you know, for him, when when he's able to go, he's got the ability to dent things, in particular on first and second down, and and, uh, and change the track for the the running back and change the line of scrimmage. You saw that uh, during the course of the ball game when he was in there. All right, thank you. Uh, players shortly.